Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Leandra the TBR Zero and today I thought that I would leaf through my 2022 reading journal. It's the first year I've ever actually attempted to keep track with a bullet journal and I'm really enjoying the process thus far and it's actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be but uh, before we get started uh, this is your reminder to give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already and also yes I am doing this video on a jigsaw puzzle that I have yet to finish. <laughs> Enjoy! This is my very simplistic uh, title uh, page for my bullet journal. I am not someone who has all of the, the fancy crafts and tools to decorate her bullet journal, so all I had were some colored markers, but you can see that I'm very proud of my Mr. Brisby, my cat, and I also have the classic bookcase and a plant that I do not actually have in my home because I'm afraid I would kill anything. <laughs> that is plant-based. My first spread went two pages and that's the 22 goals for 2022. I've seen so many other booktubers and bullet journalers take advantage of this and I really loved the idea of making these goals and some of them are a bit more quantitative while others are qualitative. Uh, for instance, the first one is read 50 books. Uh, by the end of the year. And that's been a goal of mine since 2017. And I think that I've only failed to accomplish it once. And that was a pretty chaotic year for me. I had moved to a different country and there was just a lot going on. So I gave myself the benefit of the doubt for that. But the reason why I'm keeping it at 50 books is because I am starting to bullet journal. I have just started a new YouTube channel and I thought that I needed some stability and it would be good to keep the pressure low and keep a goal that I already know that I've accomplished in the past. And other goals though, I think are a bit more creative and fun. For instance, number nine is writing a letter to the author of a book that you end up loving. I think that that's the cutest thing ever and I've only done it a few times in my life but I think that it's something I should incorporate more. And then the others include, you know, finishing more series because I'm really bad about reading the first book in a series and never picking them up again, or including more diversity in not only representation of marginalized groups, but also in genre. The next spread, uh, again, kind of goes two pages because they work together. One of them is books read in 2022, and it's a very simple uh, box formatting. When I finish a book, I color in the box. And so far you can see uh, at the time of recording this, I had only finished four books. So I had marked down four different boxes in blue. And I've seen some people organize this based on like color. So colorizing it based on genre or colorizing it based on how many stars they gave the book. For me, again, I'm keeping it simple and just sticking to blue for January. And then when it comes to February, for instance, I'll probably start coloring the books in, in a different color and that's how I'll keep track. And then on the right hand side, I've got a nice chart that again gives me a grand scheme of statistics. So I've got January through December, and then the columns that go along with it include number of books per month, as well as whether it's a, a middle grade, YA, or adult. And then I also have uh, the star systems. So how many books did I give a one through five stars? And then what the average was. I thought that would be really interesting. I want to also note how proud I am of my very green uh, comfy armchair and I wish it was real and I wish I had it in my home, but unfortunately it's the fabrication of my imagination. The next two spreads include a series tracker. Again, this is one that I've seen so many other booktubers use and I thought that it could be a great way of encouraging me to continue with series and at the time of recording, I didn't have anything written down. I still don't, but I'm actually reading The Vanishing Stair, which is book two in the Truly Devious series. So once I finish it, I can actually fill the series tracker in a little bit, which is quite exciting. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see a pre-orders sheet, which 
As a TBR zero, my goal is 100% to read mostly books from my TBR shelves that I already own. However, one leniency that I did give myself is that I would be allowed to, you know, buy a few pre-orders, especially since last year, some of my favorite books of 2021 were published in 2021 and I didn't want to deprive myself of that. So I have a sheet just to kind of keep myself honest and also be aware in case my uh, TBR for the month starts to seem to overflow. And then the next spread is book hauls and book unhauls. I really haven't seen anyone else do this and it probably isn't useful for most people, but for me, I wanted to keep track of how many books were coming in and how many books were going out. So for book hauls, you can see I have three that have come in thus far. Two were pre-orders. Another one was a part of a subscription that I am a part of. And on the right-hand side, I want to keep track of unhauls, both for books that I've read, as well as books that I haven't read, but for whatever reason, I chose to unhaul it. And then again, that would keep me honest and keep me aware of how many books are on my TBR and how many books that I've read especially this year, that I've ended up giving away. And thus far, I've given away three books that I've read this year, all to close friends, and I really hope that they love those books as much as I did. Now, this is probably a spread that I'm super proud of because it's so colorful, like, colorful and it's uh, just so full. And oh, thank you very much, Leandra. Uh, on the left-hand side, I've got 22 books in 2022. And yes, all of these books are currently on my TBR shelves, so that makes it 100% possible for me to actually complete this. I have completed one book on this list already, which was On Being a Bear, and it is brilliant. And I just organize these books based on, you know, nonfiction versus mixed fiction, as well as a few other more specific genres, like classic mysteries or classics in middle grade, just so I could be aware of how I'm switching it up and making sure that I don't have all, everything on this as the same genre. So that, that would kind of be silly if I wanted to diversify my reading and then the 22 books I want to read in 2022 are all the same. And then on the right hand side, I have Beat the Backlist. And you can see I've already filled a few of this bingo sheet in uh, with the orange outlines, but I thought this would also be a great idea for months to come, especially when I'm starting to, you know, my eyes are glazing over. I'm trying to figure out what books on my TBR shelves I want to read. Well, how about we go back, check out this bingo board and see if there's anything that I actually could fill out. The only one I'm a bit worried about is your favorite trope because I tend to pick up books where if there is romance, then it's a subplot to the major, to the major genre or the major conflict. And while I adore romances like that. I love when there's a romance in a subplot. You just, usually you don't know what kind of trope it's going to be, but I digress. Uh, with this next uh, spread, you can see it's pretty bare. And it's mainly because I really had no idea what to do with it. On the left-hand side, I did YouTube, which, you know, is pretty self-explanatory. Some other booktubers may be a bit more elaborate in the stats that they're keeping track of. But for me, again, I wanted to make it a low pressure situation. So I just have two columns. One says videos posted and the other one has the date of when I posted it. Since I do have room on the right-hand side for a third column, I may include how many uh, views I received by the end of the year per video, I think that could be really interesting to compare. And then on the right hand side, I do have Instagram. I am at great gray days underscore book reviews. Please follow me. I would love to follow you back and we could be friends. And then with Goodreads and Storygraph, I'm on both of those. But again, I didn't really know what kind of statistics I cared about <laughs> tracking. So those are blank for now. Um, but this is my head to head. And I've seen a lot of other bullet journals, journalers do this. I have January to December. And really what I'm really what I want to do for this page is if at the end of the year, I want to go through them, you know, month to month figure out which book was my favorite per month, and then uh, I'll fill in those slots, and then it'll be Sorry basically a, that. oh, that's okay, Leandra, thank you for apologizing. Um, basically, at the end of the, at the end of this spread, I should have my favorite book of uh, 2022. 
And now on to January. You can see again, it's pretty simplistic. I've got Mr. Brisby right there and some snow falling through the window to make it very January and wintry. But I, again, I kind of kept it simple. Wasn't really sure what kind of theme I wanted to go for other than uh, including some of my favorite things, which includes hot chocolate and my cat. And with these two spreads, on the left-hand side, I've got my TBR listing. Oh, I'm so proud of that hanging plant on the right-hand side. And I decided to organize my TBR. Oh, thank you, Leandra. Um, I decided to organize my TBR based on nonfiction and fiction. And then uh, if you pause the video and, and look at the little arrowed descriptions, I'm explaining where I got the book or why I'm reading it for this month, which I just think is a fun thing for me to look back on later on and then below that I have a little calendar that I then mark uh, with color coding or with the symbol I attach to each book so that I know which books I read when and what order and then on the right hand side I've got books read which for those statistics I pretty much just included uh, the author and the title uh, the page numbers, as well as the genre. And then the final column, you might just notice says notes. And that's really just for me in case there's something more I wanted to include that I thought would be interesting. For instance, whether the book's a translation, whether it was the debut novel for this author, or whether uh, there's some great representation uh, of diversity. For instance, uh, LGBT plus, members being represented or maybe a bi poc or um aapi um member as well uh and that again is making sure that i'm being self-conscious and aware that i'm you know um basically that i'm making sure that i'm i'm being diverse in my reading situation you can see here that i pretty much dedicate one page uh to every book that I read. And the statistics remain the same. You can see my star ratings and everything like that. But other things I include are a backstory, so how I got the book, why I'm reading it now, and then my review, obviously, that I kind of write in my own words and my own thoughts within 24 hours um, of finishing the book. And then I also include little uh, drawings that I think represent the book pretty well. For instance, on the last page, uh, the final revival of Opal and Nev, I drew a little guitar. And then for Villainy in Vienna, which is on the left-hand side of this page, I have uh, a puzzle and then a nice Viennese coffee, which I think uh, is a pretty good description for <laughs> the fact that this book has espionage and mystery and it's based in Vienna. Um, on the right hand side, I'm really proud of this drawing because I really am not a, an artist. I'm not someone who is well known for their drawings, but for the School for Good Mothers, I think I did a pretty good drawing for Frida, who's the mother, and then uh, for her daughter, uh, Harriet. But yeah, that's the end of my bullet journal for now. I fully intend to start making a February spread and then at some point as I'm showing that off I'll do a flip through so you can see all of my book reviews for January too. But for now I hope you guys had a great time watching this video. Thanks for spending some of your time uh, with me today and be sure to like and subscribe so you can keep track of when I upload new videos. Thanks guys. I hope you have a great day. Bye.